Uh, we, we, we ran through a lot of different things. Um, one of the funniest stories I ever tell everybody about me and Junior, and it kind of speaks a little bit to our upbringing and the kind of the funny stuff we had to deal with. We were in Panama City once, and um, we liked to have competitions about everything, whether it was who could run the fastest, who could make the most jokes, mostly who could eat the most is about what we could eat off the most. We went to the donut hole down in Panama City, I don't know if anybody's ever been there. The portions they serve are really big. Yes, sir. Yes. You've enjoyed it. That's nice. <laughs> so my father takes us down there, puts us at our own table, and he says, don't eat a lot, which I don't know why he would even bother saying that does. He said, don't eat a lot. He said, the portions are big, and we're going to eat down the road. We sat at a different table. That was a tactical error on his part. He got the bill. It was $170 for breakfast. <laughs> Don't worry, we didn't waste any of that food. We came over to our table and there was empty plates everywhere. And Junior leans back and says, we ate it. It was a problem. <laughs> so my dad points down the street and says, there's a store down there called Wings. It was one of those apparently like uh, souvenir shops. So we have to, he made us run to Wings and he said, if you don't make it there in time, you're gonna live in Panama City because we're going home. So two little fat kids running, two little Mexican fat kids running down the street, sweating kind of like we were out there. Um, and we get up there and he sees us laughing coming across. He's like, ha you have to take us back with you because we made it. So it's connected to a gas station. He comes out with a plastic bag, sits us down in two rocking chairs and says, sit down. He goes, I'm your father, I'm your uncle. I'm here to help you. You want to be fat? I'm going to help you. So we sit down in these rocking chairs, and he dumps out this plastic bag full of Twinkies, Mr. Goodballs, and everything you can imagine. Once I thought this was tactical layer number two because this is all the stuff that we like. <laughs> Turns out it was genius. We started eating. By the third candy bar, we were crying. Like chocolate tears, we were crying. And finally he was like, come on, keep eating, keep eating. He probably bought about $50 worth of candy. This old woman walks by and she says, why are they crying? And my father turned to her, serious as can be, and says, because they're happy. <laughs> <laughs> that was our house. Um, <clears throat> stories with uh, Junior. Um, one thing I wanted to say, and I really enjoyed meeting Nita's family. I've met Nita. I've always thought very, very highly of her. Um, anytime Junior tells me something about somebody, I believe it to be true because he's very upfront, whether you like it or not, and you can take his word for it. And I love the fact that you're a baseball family. So I wanted to put this kind of in terms that you would understand of how I see Junior in the sense that I believe that he's a five-tool player. The way that in baseball, the best players are always considered to be five-tool. They have five tools to him, and I think Junior has five tools to him as a person, and I'm gonna try to get through this. Um, <clears throat> number one, he's loving. And um, no one's gonna love you better than he will. 